Hey, what's up guys? And before this video start, the last time I told you guys if you wanted to see the remainder of Soul Leveling, you can get them guys down below in the Amazon link. Last time I gave you volume 4 guys. Now I'm back with 5, 6 and 7 and 8 with the best prices. Yes guys. And if you purchase 3, you will get it for the price of 2 guys. So each of them has over 300 and 12 pages so overall that is 1000 plus pages i'll be properly labeling them down below so if you want to go ahead and click on volume 5 and you can see volume 6 volume 7 volume 8 so you can click on that link and purchase if you like or you can also get them on kindle which is instantly available guys for you guys to read on kindle or you can get the physical copy delivered to you so yeah guys check them out links will be down description and enjoy so let's get into this hey what's up guys and welcome back to any making three and today i'm going to be giving you part 10 of what if naruto was neglected with a solo leveling system guys remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was a King of Curses Sukuna. And enjoy that guys. And over on Anime King 2, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Fuse with a 12 tailed Dragon God. So go over there and enjoy that guys. And remember if you're new, don't forget to obliterate that red subscribe button. All the links for the other channels will be down in the description. So without further ado or wasting more time, how about we jump right into this begin now guys. So the last part that we left off, Naruto had faced off against Kisame in a truly dreadful battle where Kisame almost died however, Reina intervened. With that they were able to flee. As they left, Naruto sent something as he made his way over there. It turns out Orochimaru was pleading to Snedi to end his life. She was the best medical ninja that he knew. He couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't stand it anymore. He just wanted it all to be over. He begged and pleaded with her. Things did not go as he expected though. As Naruto arrived on the scene. He was petrified. Thinking that this was another hallucination. However Naruto proceeded to beat the living snot out of him. To show him that he was actually there. However the Sanin still could not tell. Snedi actually felt a bit bad for the Sanin. Seeing him like this. Years of being friends with him. Being on the same team kicked in. Look at him now. He looked like a pathetic mess on the ground. Obliterated. He couldn't even stand. Naruto decided to end it once and for all. He reduced Urchimar to nothing with his blades before he drive a blade inside of his chest. This wasn't any normal blade though. It destroyed Urchimar's soul. Eviscerated completely. The sound for all of the members were rather shocked when the marks on their necks with Urchimar fragment inside vanish. His soul fragment was no longer the source in their curse marks. They still retained the power but his soul was gone that meant there was absolutely no chance that the Sanin could be revived. 
Over the years, Naruto had acquired many powerful weapons and he was now using them to his disposal. Naruto released a violent burst of power because he still couldn't understand. Even after killing the Sanin, he felt absolutely nothing. Naruto has said to Itachi that when he was finished, he wasn't sure what he was going to do. And now the emptiness. The emptiness was threatening to swallow him. And if it did, there would be no coming back for him. He would be gone. However, his sister arrived. She hugged him. She begged him not to do this. She pleaded with him to stay this time. As Naruto collapsed down to his knees. The strain and stress of everything finally getting to him. He told her that he would stay her tears getting through to him. We then had a little time skip. They were still on the road as Mito was spending time with Naruto as much as she could. He said that he was going to stay. She was by his side afraid that he might disappear but he promised that he would not. She ended up getting no sleep because she wanted to see him so she was really tired after their little spar and she ended up falling asleep. Jare then spoke to Naruto as Naruto told him that he had nothing to worry about. He would not leave and there would be no problem following him back to Kanoha. Him and the Tishukage had an agreement. More so Naruto forced the Tishukage hand not to come after him or there would be countless chaos and bloodshed. And right now the Tishukage was still paying for what he did. After all the life that was lost in the mayhem. The group decided to head back to Kanoha. Mito had been scared in the morning when she woke up and she did not see him but Naruto always feel peckish in the morning so he grabbed something to eat and brought her something back as well. They headed back towards the village. Naruto description was out there and they were seeing him now and they heard about what happened at the hidden stone so many were looking his way. At the exact time Kushina came out of the office. She was frightened, baffled. She completely stopped in her tracks, not sure what to say. She remained silent as Naruto said that they should probably go up. People are staring. So that is what they did. They headed up as they made their way. Through the walk she was silent. They all were. When they enter in the office, it was awkward. Naruto asked for some time to speak with the both of them. The others left. He made it plain and simple. He wasn't angry at them. His anger had leaked away a long time ago. However, he would never forgive them for what they did. But they could start over. But he was no longer their son. He just did not see them as parents anymore. As he let out how he felt, what he's been through, it hurt the both of them deeply. But he was giving them a second chance to start over as friends. Because he did not know if he could ever see them as parents ever again. Snelly had already saw that as she told Jare that. However, they still had a chance to make things right somewhat. So with that, Naruto and Mito made his way. Menma was rather shocked. Menma was spending time with Ino Yamanaka. The both of them were rather fond of each other. The moment Naruto and him came face to face, Naruto attacked him. This was what Menma was seeking for so long now. To have a spar with his brother. He felt so happy as they spar and clash against each other. They spend the rest of the day talking as Naruto told Menma that it's okay. Menma was rather shocked. No one else was able to see that most of the times he struggled with. Not knowing if he can do what people think of him because of the family that he's from. But in one spar Naruto was able to see it. Yes he was able to see it all. Naruto stayed at the hotel for that night. We then skipped to Reina. She was thinking a lot about what Naruto said about leaving the organization and about her life. The man that she still loved despite his death. They were going to have children. Huh. 
She thought about herself as a mother. She couldn't see that. Maybe she didn't know. But who would want to have a child with her? She thought she was a dangerous, wanted individual. So yeah, that part of her life was basically sealed. But Naruto's words were getting to her. As for Naruto, he had a strange dream. His dream was about Gurin. She was begging him to move on. She was suffering seeing him like this. She didn't like to know that. She was causing him pain. Because it brought her great turmoil. She was begging and pleading with him. All she wanted was for him to be happy. When Naruto woke up, he was shocked. Why was he dreaming that now, he thought to himself. Being with someone else feel like it would be betraying her. Yeah, that is exactly what it felt like. Well, for now he will just focus on what is in front of him. He will be meeting with his father tomorrow. So yeah guys, basically that's what left off. You guys can switch across the place to yourself. So let's begin this new episode. Word spread around the elemental nation like wildfire. Everyone who was everyone knew of the long lost son of Minato no Mikaze returning back to the village, his home village. We begin this at the hidden stone. Oniki looked like he had aged at least 10 years in the past few weeks. A lot has happened. It was his fault why thousands of his people had been massacred. It was his fault to get involved with that boy who just wanted to be left alone. The boy had an army, a literal army at his beck and call. Outrage was made in every meeting that he attended. They wanted to know what was his retaliation plan. However, seeing that weapon at Kura stuck his throat after he lost his two daughters to war. Oniki thought that he might just lose his entire family once again. The boy had made it clear what would happen if they came after him once again. And now, he's gone and joined Kanoha. Not only does he have a separate army, he has the full might of Kanoha, plus his father of all people backing him. Oniki wiped a hand down his face, feeling rather stressful about the continuation for his village. The council was not pleased. Even the daimyo was rather pissed off at him. He knew they were having secret talks behind his back. This could lead to his early retirement. Yes, he was a kage, but the daimyo owned the land and everything around it. And there was many influential persons on the council. And three of those people lost children in that massacre. And Oniki was being blamed for all of it. The actions for him to go after that boy. Many who had the deep-seated hatred for Minato was now pulling back. Because so much was lost in their conquest of kidnapping that boy. Unaware that he was this all-powerful and mighty. The council was truly breathing down his neck. Three members, three of the most important, lost their family. Innocent people who... Just got caught up in the mayhem. And that was all because of him and his action to kidnap that boy who just wanted to be left alone. If he had just listened and released him the moment he said that. Even if Oniki wanted to retaliate. If he planned to attack now, he would be going up against that shadow army once again. That army that cannot be contained. And he would be going up against the full might of Kanoha. In no way was Oniki scared of this boy or was he scared of Minato despite what they were able to accomplish in their lifetime. However, he was not an idiot. He knew the consequences and it was put right in front of him what would happen if an attack like that was to be raised once again. And maybe this time it wouldn't just stop at a few thousand people. Maybe it would bring the hidden stone to an end. And he couldn't afford to let that happen under his watch. Time skip. Sasori had just brought some information to light. Given the previous two encounters that the Akaski had with 
the boy known as Naruto, Namikaze now, Nagato, the leader of the organization, representing himself as Pain, decided that he would be the one to go after the Nine Tails. Sending any other member would just lead to their unfortunate demise, so he would be the one to carry out the kidnapping of the Nine Tails when the time was right. For now, they had other things to worry about. Time skip. Kurna Yuai was making her way as she knocked on the apartment door. The door opened up. Standing there was Anko Midarashi. She was wearing an oversized t-shirt. And that was all. Oh, Nai-chan, you're here. Anko said, let me just get dressed. Kurnai stepped inside, used to the scene by now, as she sat down in the chair. So what do you think will be the outcome of today's match? It was Kurnai that asked, as Uncle voice came from the other room. Well, I mean it is the Fort Okage. He's currently the strongest ninja in the world. But this guy has sent the hidden stone running in fear from him. Not to mention... He did this world a favor, something I have yet to thank him for. Uncle said exposing her neck as she came out. There was nothing there. Kurnai smiled at that. Orochimaru had placed an ingrained part of his soul into the curse mark. When Jiraiya had went to find out why the curse mark was embedded in Uncle's DNA and chakra. Orochimaru's soul was a reason. However, whatever Naruto did, however he killed Orochimaru, the Sanin soul was gone from everywhere, including the mark. All that left was the power, and that was easy to remove by their sealing department in Kanoha. Anku had cried when it was taken off. After all these years, that stigma that she carried around, knowing that that man was still a part of her, after what he did, it was finally gone. It made her burst in tears. She had not yet gotten to see him and thank him for what he had done. The rumors had spread that he was the one that ended the Sanin in a very special way. But none of them knew that what he did would result into this. The Hokage had checked on her mark. He was rather surprised. Uncle wanted to see his son though. So she could probably thank him even though she wanted to be the one to gut the Sanin. But at least he was dead and that she was happy for. What they were talking about though was the upcoming battle between Minato and his son. Yes, there was going to be a battle. All of the higher ups wished to see what Naruto was truly capable of. Minato had spoken to them on behalf of Naruto. The rank of Jenin and Chunin are out of the picture. However, jumping from not being a citizen of this village right to Jonin must be a special affair. So yes, the higher ups, all the Jonins would be there to witness and see what this boy was truly capable of. Minato had gave him a high recommendation of course. However, he didn't want it to seem like he was biased. The boy was his son after all. Many were unaware of the problems that were taking place in the family. A select few knew about it but many did not know the inner complications that were taking place. But yes, a few knew of the problems that were going on as we speak. Both women being a Jonin and they had a special department, Kurnai for Genjutsu and Anko, who would be succeeding Ibiki in the torture and interrogation department. After all, she was second best, maybe even better than him. Give it some time though. As Uncle got dressed as they made their way off, Uncle really wanted to see him and thank him for all that he had done. As Asanin was truly gone and she just wanted to thank him for that. Meanwhile that was going on, unknown location, hideout, previous owner, Orochimaru, the deceased, no longer being here. The hideout has been renovated and changed over to someone else. Kabuto Yakuji, right hand man of Orochimaru, was standing tall. Yes, he was standing tall. 
Kabuto had made sure that the people recognized who was in charge now. Kabuto had killed over 83 individuals who believed they could dethrone him, believing that he doesn't have what it takes. Many just saw him as a whiny, conniving weasel. Yes, however, he put the fear of coming into the others by how he had showed them that they would not last long against him by slaughtering 83. Yes, the sound was short on man, but he had to cement his position as a leader now. Kabuto would do right by his old master. He will take over. He will be the one to run things. The sound four had fallen in line. As powerful as they were, none of them were cut out to be a leader of the organization. And Kabuto was allowing them the same privilege that Urchimar gave them. So yes, they were quite fine with that. Unlike Uncle who removed the mark, they did not. Orochimaru's soul was gone out of the mark, but the power was still there and their transformation was still there. It's just, their loyalty in the man was a bit shaky now and he could not kill them from afar. And also he could not revive himself out of their body or take over because his soul was gone, but they still possessed the power. Uncle wanted nothing to do with the man so she did not care for any power. After all, she's never used the curse mark before to fight a battle. It has always been sealed off and it was finally gone. Kabuto Yakuji knew that he needed strength. His master was in a constant state of fear. Kabuto refused to let that happen to him. He needed vast amount of strength to accomplish what he wanted. Kabuto had something planned. Something big, something epic, something that would rock the foundations of the elemental nation. When he was done, history after history, generation after generation will know his name. There was no doubt about that and he would bask in all of it. But he need to get stronger, that is why. He was performing some experiments. Not to mention Kabuta had made sure that those who are valuable were nearby. After all, the sound had lost a lot of manpower. Kimimaru was dead. A lot of the followers of Kimimaru was dead. Renji and the others were dead. Gozu, they were all dead. Killed by Naruto. Kabuto knew that he had to remain in hiding for now. However, he had brought Jugo over. He's also been festering Jugo mind on who killed Kimimaru. The one person that he was close to. Because... He wanted Jugo to be ready for the battle that was going to unknowingly come. He was also trying to make Jugo as powerful as ever. Everyone around him. Kabuto wanted to lead a strong force. But he had to be the strongest. And there would be no negotiation there. So with that he returned back to what he was doing. Meanwhile, back at the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto had a small smile on his face. Come over here and give me a hug. He walked forward as he embraced Mikoto Uchiha. He was a fair bit taller than her now. As they broke apart. My, how much have you grown, she said. There was a happy smile on her face. As Naruto looked at her. And you still look as lovely as you did. It seems you haven't even aged. A day, she blushed. Oh, come on now, she said. She was really happy to see him. I mean it, she said. I'm so glad that you're back. Yeah, said Naruto. As he looked at her. You must be pretty upset with me, right? Upset? She said looking at him. Well, I was basically a part of your family. Whenever they were busy, I was dropped off here. You took care of me. You made sure I was alright. You always check up on me to make sure I was doing okay and yet I left and I didn't tell you. However, I had my reasons. I knew if I had come to you with this, you would have convinced me to stay. And after everything that you have done for me, I wouldn't have the heart to say no to you. I'm not upset with you, she said. As Naruto blinked and looked towards her. Yes, 
I was heartbroken that you left and that you did not say anything to me and I was worried. I was so so worried. Me and Kushina has been through a lot. We had a fight. And the reason why you left, we didn't talk for a long long while. Even when she gave birth to the twins. Even when the incident happened. I was so upset with her and at the same time I was so worried. Hearing that she was okay from a different source. And I just couldn't find it to say it to her. However, Minato came to me and I could tell that he was messed up as well but not even he could get her out of her depression. The moment those twins were brought into this world, the moment she held them, everything came flooding back. Everything that she tried to push away those feelings, it hit her. Minato tried his best but he could not. So I... I gave in. I had to. Despite what she's done, I just could not see her that way. Over the years, our friendship has brought back up and the both of us are still friends. I bet you're not too happy about that. It's okay, said Naruto. I've talked to them. They understand how I feel about this. And besides, after everything you've done for me, there is no way in this world I can ever hate you, he said, smiling at her. The both of them start to walk and talk. Sasuke Uchiha was watching from a distance away. So that was him, huh? The older brother of Mito and Minma. As he was checking out the guy, he heard that he was strong, Minma had said. That he was stronger than Itachi, but Sasuke refused to believe that. Itachi was one of the strongest people he knew, stronger than even his father, so there was no way in hell, but he would reach that level soon enough. Sasuke made his way off. A few minutes later, Naruto hopped up to the roof. As he stood there, the person behind him walking up and standing there as well. You know. One might think that you knew where I was this entire time, given our interaction. Well, we were good friends back then. It wouldn't look so weird if we just reunited. Itachi Uchiha said as he stood there. I guess you're right. So, is this permanent, he asks. You remember what I told you after I finish? Ending the Sanyin's life, what I'll do? Well, you didn't really tell me what you would do. Exactly. That was a real low point for me. After killing him, I felt nothing. No joy, happiness, nothing at all. And having nothing, I didn't think he would ever see me again. No one would. However, my sister, she was there. She gave me a reason to go on. To protect and watch over my siblings and make them the best they can be. Itachi placed a hand on his shoulder. That's something good to focus on, he said. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, said Naruto. The both of them were. The best of friends. Still is. Most people did not get Itachi. But Naruto, understanding more than most and the things that he would do, whatever it takes. To make sure that his family is safe. Itachi could tell that Naruto had not fully recovered but things were looking much better off. Naruto and Itachi jumped down as they came across. Fukaku Uchiha. Naruto shot the man hand. He's met the man on multiple occasions. As he welcomed Naruto back, he didn't really have much to say. As Naruto watched him, hid inside. So I take it, you're in charge now, Naruto said. I've taken over many responsibilities, Itachi said, with the inner and outside working of the clan. My father took some of the issue off my hand with the police force. But things are running smooth, better than before. When it just started, it was a disaster. 
The both of them were walking as they were talking. Girls within the Uchiha clan knew of Itachi rather well. Several of them eyeing him. Naruto noticed that. Naruto on the other hand. Their gaze fell on him with a shocked look. Many saw the posters, the paintings, the drawings, but to actually see him. As they step out of the Uchiha clan into the residential area of the village, civilians, everyone turned their head. Unaware to Itachi, there was a pole of the hottest guy within Kanoha. And Itachi was on that list, but now seen Ruta as well. The list was being rewritten. The both of them walk as they talk, coming across several people. Several people that Itachi introduced Naruto to. After all, he didn't really know anyone here. The only person that he knew back then was Itachi. Really. Anyone else it was just a simple conversation here and there but nothing too extravagant. Nothing too important. The both of them were talking about the upcoming battle. Itachi of course would be attending to see what he was capable of now, facing off against his own father. Itachi did not say that word though, he said the Hokage. As Naruto's reaction was just that, Itachi knew that Naruto had released the hate that he felt for them a long time ago. He just could not see them as parents. However, him giving them a chance Itachi thought was the right thing. Yes, they messed up. They messed up real real bad. However, Naruto needed this. Itachi was afraid of his friend's sanity. Not knowing what he was out there doing but now that he was here. He needed this. This was going to help him. Come around. Time skip. At the Namikaze compound. When I heard about the tests, I thought that maybe he would put him up against one of the elite Jonins but to offer to fight him himself. I mean, really? Said Mito. She didn't know what to think of this upcoming battle. Her father was the strongest person at the moment in the village that she knew. Stronger than Jiraiya Jiji. She did not know how this battle would end. Her brother had ended Urchimaru, who was a Sanin. Her brother was really strong, there was no doubt about that. But this was her father. But what if her brother was actually stronger? She did not know. What do you think, she said. Gazing towards Menma, who was lost in his thoughts. Menma was also wondering the outcome of this battle as well. Given the rocky relationship that the both of them had at the moment, Menma did not believe that fighting each other was a good idea. What if it turned into more than just a normal, well, promotion of Naruto's strength? What if it turned bloody? Who exactly would be able to stop those two if they actually got to fight for real? His father was one of the strongest. And fighting Naruto was like fighting his dad. He believed that they were close in strength. He did not even know who had the edge. He was worried about the outcome. Hey! He snapped out of his thoughts. What's wrong said Mito? You know how things are rocky right now right? Dad offering to test Naruto himself. What if it goes bad? You mean bloody bad? Exactly said Menma. I don't think they would go that far. I mean despite everything. It's not like they hate each other to want to kill each other. And besides Naruto said that he's given them a second chance. To start over you remember? And mom and dad say that they were going to work as hard as they can. To prove that they want to have him in their life. Both ways. I guess you're right said Menma. It's just a worrying thought because if they do actually start to fight for real. I mean who's gonna stop them? Who in this village is capable of stopping either of them? You've seen what our brother can do. You more than me. He killed Urchimaru, who was feared by many. He was a dangerous criminal. I guess you're right, said Mito. It's not a guess, I'm right. 
Yeah, she said. Well, I don't think it will go that far. It's not gonna go that far, she said. Time skip with Naruto. His mind was now conflicted. Mikato had told him everything. Things that he did not know. When giving birth, most female is hit by an unknown side effect. A great depression after giving birth. Him leaving right before his siblings were born. It hit his mother far worse than he could even imagine. Naruto did not know that it was that bad. He did not know any of this. He knew what they did to him was horrendous, horrible. However, he never knew that his leaving would have such a negative effect on both of their mentality. If it wasn't for Mikato being there, his mom would probably not even be alive right now. The things that Mikato had told him was horrendous. But then he thought that she despised him. That she saw him as a mistake. That she didn't want him to be brought in this world. And maybe part of that was right. He was never supposed to be there. His birth was never planned. Neither of them already. He's not excusing either of them for their actions. Despite hearing this, he still can't find it in himself to just say he's over it. He can't just go back and say, Mom, Dad. That is really hard on him to just say that. However, maybe it's good if he cut her a bit of slack. Being here must be hard for them, as it is hard for him. Naruto made his way. Hey! He heard someone calling out to him. He could tell that it was linked to his direction. As he came to a stop, the person's feet running up to him as he came to a stop. Naruto turned to face the individual. As he turned, a woman was standing there. She had a slender frame with violet hair, pupilless, purple eyes. She was dressed in a brown trench coat with a fishnet underneath an orange skirt her fishnet traveling down and she was wearing high thigh sandals as Naruto looked at her not exactly knowing who she was yeah you probably don't know who I am I am uncle Mirashi she said damn she said looking at him I knew there was whispers and gossips but you you're really handsome. I guess the good looks run in the jeans, huh? She said nudging him. Thank you, said Naruto. You're welcome, she said. So, the reason I'm here, I want to thank you. Even though you did take away my kill. Your kill. That bastard. That snake. He brined me some time ago. A horrendous mark. That has plagued me for a long time and ruined my life. But because of you, it's gone. He placed his damn soul in his mark. I heard you did something special in his death. Oh that, said Naruto. I know of his strange obsession about immortality. And how he can revive himself. So I made sure to destroy any part of his soul that is out there. It seems the one in your mark also vanish as well yeah that's awesome she said to him because of you it's gone i gotta repay you somehow tell you what there's a really good bar not far from here you just keep on walking and you can't miss it the leaf pub i'll buy you a drink later on she said to him it's all right he said come on what's wrong with a friend buying a friend a drink friends said naruto well, because of your efforts, that mark is now gone off of me, so, yeah, I think that would consider us friends. Look, you don't know me well, but if you ask anyone, I'm a very persistent person. So it's better if you just say yes to me right here and now. Is that so, said Naruto. Uncle popped a smirk as she looked at him. 
Yep. Tell you what. I'll think about it, said Naruto. There we go, she said. I'll be seeing you at that fight. And a drink for later on. She said with a smile before waving as she rushed off. She had somewhere to be. Huh. Strange girl, Naruto thought. Immediately, his mind started to think about the dream that he had. With Gurren. Being upset with him. For wallowing like that. For staying in that state of depression. Was she really affected by how he was now treating himself? If she was alive, she would have probably tried to beat the living shit out of him for what he was doing. What he was doing. After all, things are a bit better now. Yeah, they are. Time skip. The place was large. This was where the others were gathered when the tuning exams was taking place. As Kushina, Mikato, Menma, all of them were there. As Mito was talking to Sasuke, there were a lot of people here. Not the civilians, the ninjas. As they wanted to see what he was capable of. Many people had spoken about it so it had truly gotten around. Given the fact that the Fort Akagi himself was taking part. Yes, it was a very big deal. As for the others, they were all here, the clan heads, and the soon-to-be future clan heads as well. As Itachi was seated with his father, along with a few other Uchiyas who were here to watch the event. This was truly a spectacle to see. Many heard about Ruta's strength. Many wanted to see what it was. Fighting the fastest man alive. There was no way that he could win. People even started to place bets. The one that started to place the bet was none other than Snavi herself and the ref for this little match of theirs. Both Sonins were even in the village as Jiraiya was seated with the Namikaze family. Snavi was collecting and placing bets. She put her bets on Ruto. She didn't know why but... She believed the kid was going to surprise them all. Many have it in their mind that Minato was going to win. He's the yellow flash. Minato, come on. Minato was standing in the center. As Naruto walked out, he was wearing a long black cloak that fluttered in the wind. He was wearing a white shirt as the coat was open, along with black pants as well, and comfortable sandals. He stepped forward as he looked around. Minato looked at him as he was about to say something but Naruto spoke. You know, it's a shame that you invited so much people. I mean, if I was going to lose, I wouldn't want so much people to be here. Minato realized that Naruto was taunting him. This was a big step. He was actually joking with him. A smile came on the man's face, a smile of joy. Don't worry, he said. They will still see that you're strong, even when you lose. Ha, huh. is that so, said Naruto. Well then, I hope you prepare them for the dethroning of the Fort Okage as the strongest. Because from today on, that will no longer be a thing. Minato was smiling. Well... Let's see if you can make that a reality. If Naruto was actually stronger and faster than him, it would make him proud. Yes, because despite everything, despite what they've been through, Naruto was still his son. He knew that he wasn't a part of his life to make him that fast or strong. But he was still his son. Yes, he was. So now they walk out towards the field. Are you too ready, she said. The both of them nodded. She walked over towards Naruto. I got a lot of money riding on this. So you better win. It's gonna be a lot of drinking money. Is that so? Said Naruto. Don't worry. I'll do my best. I want more than your best. 150% she said. As Naruto blink. Yeah, I'm serious. This is no ordinary opponent that you're going up against. Remember that. 
Yeah, I remember, said Naruto. All right, Snare, they start to speak out to the public. I'm sure that all of you are here for one thing. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's begin the testing off. She glanced towards Naruto, who simply nodded. Naruto Namikaze, to see if he's worthy of the Jonin rank. Many people went quiet as Naruto gazed fixated through the crowd. His mother. They both looked at each other as she smiled at him. A calm look was on Naruto's face. That was progress. He was looking at her rather calm. He wasn't angry. He never really was after a long time ago. As she looked towards him, Kushina had been desperately trying to find a way for the both of them just to sit down and talk but her nerves was getting the better of her. And having him back, so many bad feelings were returning of what she did in the past. She just hoped that she can push past them and be the mother that she never was to him. She pray and hope. Alright, Snede said, here we have it. The four Tokage, said to be the fastest man alive, and his son, Naruto Namikaze. Many of you, unaware of his strength, but you've heard of his feats. So let us see what the outcome of this match will be, she said. As all of the Jonins, all of the clan heads locked in. Even Donzo Shimura was here in public. Kaharu Homura, everyone was there to see and witness. The Chonins were on standby around the village just in case. And most were not here. After all, they were on missions. The ones that were here were super glad that they had the time to be here. After all, this was just something that you did not miss. Kakashi was also interested to see this as well. Along with his eternal rival guy was there with his students. Yes, a few had brought along their students with them. As this was a privilege to see after all. Snavi began the match as she jumped away. Neither of them moved. Everyone thought what they were waiting for. Suddenly, sparks could be seen. Lee was confused. They all were. The younger ones that were there, of course. Guy Sensei, what was that? Wait, where did that come from? said Tintin. As she noticed the Fort Okage was now holding a three prom kunai. Guy pointed towards Naruto's feet. Do you see that? he said. Neji eyes widened in surprise, confusing the others. What the hell is going on? Kiba said. He he moved. Neji said. Who? What are you talking about? Kiba said. Neji is right. He moved. It was Kurna that spoke up. He moved from his spot and he attacked the Hokage and returned back to that spot just a bit off. You see the foot indentations, right? But that's not possible. I didn't see him move. Kiba said confused. He's just that fast. But the Hokage is still standing. That means he blocked it, right? It was Kiba that spoke. Exactly. So, what the hell Kiba said? Still in complete shock. Jiraiya realized that Naruto was holding back. In their last encounter from his speed. Minato was fast enough to block that though. Many think that it was just the high Shin, but Minato was also incredibly fast after all. To be able to move at such speeds, your body had to adapt. And after years of moving at such speed, his body has adapted quite well. Naruto was standing there with a dagger in his hand. Huh. Faster than they say, huh? You haven't seen anything yet, said Minato. Come on, show me what you can do. They want to see what you are capable of. They want to see if you're worthy of the rank. Alright, fine, said Naruto. He then vanished. He appeared behind Minato with his feet 
was splitting through the sky. Minato blocked it with his right arm as he grabbed Naruto's ankle and spun. However, Naruto kicked out of his grasp and appeared behind the man and swung his dagger. Minato ducked and came back up and brought the three prom kunai as Naruto slammed his dagger on top of it. Both of the weapons clashed on each other, neither of them breaking. Both men vanish as they reappear at the edge of the arena before they blinked away. They crash in the center. Minato leaped away as he threw several kunais out, his special kunais. Many had it in their mind that it was over now. Minato appeared behind Naruto in a blink. He then appeared in front of Naruto trying to confuse him. However, Naruto simply closed his eyes for a fraction of a second before he muttered, Quicksilver. His body was surrounded by a blue aura. Minato, who was moving at incredible speeds, saw Naruto's eyes focus on him. Yes, I can see you. Naruto spoke fast as none could understand his words, but to Minato he heard them quite well. Naruto's hands were moving like blurs. Two daggers in his hand now as Minato was moving around him like light. The both of them clash violently, sparks going everywhere until Naruto vanished as well. All you could see was a blue aura that was leaving Naruto's body as he activated his quicksilver technique. They then heard it. Dagger rush. Minato was forced to jump back as he had to deflect against several daggers. Everyone noticed that Minato had a cut on his right arm and a slash on his Jonin vest. Naruto had a slash on his white shirt that ripped it open exposing his chest as well. It was a thin tiny slash. Minato was deflecting against the daggers as they were coming from all over and moving so fast. That is when Naruto appeared above him. Minato crossed his arms. Minato used his chakra to reduce the effects. He heard about Naruto's monstrous strength. He sent the weight down to his legs and into the ground. The whole area erupted in a violent explosion. Minato almost fumbled and fell down but he vanished, appearing a distance away. As Naruto appeared in front of him, swiping and slashing, both men were engaged in their kunais clashing against each other, dagger and kunai to be quite exact. The Jonins, the clan heads, they were baffled. This, this was not normal. They heard that he was powerful for his age, but this was, this was, it couldn't be explained. This was truly a one in a kind gem. Itachi had a small smile on his face. Naruto is as strong as ever. Itachi thought to himself, Whoa, that was all men Manmito could see. Their brother was awesome. Keeping up with their dad like that, not even breaking a sweat. There was only one word they could say about that. Awesome. Naruto and Minato separated. As Naruto was looking at him, I think that's enough for the warm up, wouldn't you say? Wait, did he just say warm up? Kiba asked the others, who were in a maze just like everyone else. I think you're right, said Minato. What you've showed so far is good, but I know that you have a lot more hidden away. So why don't I help you bring it out? Minato appeared behind Naruto, his hand covered in chakra. Luckily though, a shadow came from Naruto's shadow. The moment Minato made contact with it, the shadow was bind and it was forced to return back to Naruto. Naruto was able to move just in time. What was that? A special seal of mine, said Minato. I was hoping to seal off your chakra, but it didn't work as I thought, he said. Naruto looked down towards his feet. He then glanced over towards the Hiroshin Kunai that was nowhere close. How did you get behind me? I would know if you marked me, he said. Well, I had a lot of years to work on the Hiroshin technique. And I had a lot more time to develop it. Oh, I see, said Naruto. There is a radius. 
And given the amount that is surrounding me at the moment, that radius completely surrounds the area, doesn't it? Minato smile. So that means I can appear wherever I want to be. Minato said behind Naruto. For the first time, a brutal hit was connected as Naruto was sent sailing. He bounced across the ground before he slammed his hand down and came to a stop. Minato appeared above him as Naruto blocked it. Minato appeared to the side as Naruto blocked it. He kept on appearing as Naruto kept on blocking it. Minato appear a few feet away from him. My senses are really sharp, said Naruto. Minato appear in front of him as Naruto turned and blocked the punch from behind as the man had teleported the next fraction of a second. I see they are, said Minato, as Naruto held on to him. Naruto gripped both of his wrists. However, Naruto felt something. He had to release Minato as his hands started to burn. Sealing art, said Naruto. I was never really a big fan of it. I have other ways to make up for it though, said Naruto as a strange. Armor started to appear all over his body. Minato stood there and watched everyone, was focused and silent, watching as a strange purple and black armor. It looked like purple and black flames whipping off him. Minato could not even blink as a fist was buried in his guts. He was sent sailing away before he disappeared and reappeared behind Nuta as Nuta slapped him away. The man bounced across the wall as he appeared in front of Nuta with a knee. Nuta slapped it down. They start to trade blows. Minato was blasted away. In mid-ear, Minato sped through Hansheim. He released a massive gust. However, Naruto was behind him and dropped his hands on him. Minato reappeared though, right above Naruto. Electricity, cackling around his hand. As he released the technique with one word, lightning release. Catastrophic strike. Lightning clash and spread all over, surrounding Naruto like a dome and then it started to converge. To the normal person this happened like that, but to Naruto he had the time to see coming towards him. Naruto stopped before he started to spin as the lightning converge. Boom! Minato was blown away. Instead of it internally combusting, Naruto armor served as a reflector as he used it to gather the chakra. Inside of the lightning, yes. His armor could differentiate between the different chakra. He then released the same kinetic force. Upon doing that, it targeted Minato lightning and let it explode. Naruto landed as he dashed and grabbed Minato by the face. Naruto slammed his hand into the wall because Minato was already gone as he appeared behind Naruto. Two shadowy arms came out of Naruto armor. As a shadow, that black part of the armor was his shadow. It grabbed Minato as a knee slammed into his guts. Minato bounced across the ground as he crashed on the ground. Naruto stood tall above him. Everyone was speechless. No words were said. They could not fathom what they were witnessing. Sanadi put her hopes on Naruto but this was not what she was expecting. This kid, this kid was truly something else. As Naruto stood there, his voice was distorted. Come on now, he said. That can't be all that you're capable of. After all these years, I must say, I'm a little disappointed. Minato picked himself up with a chuckle. Yes, anyone would be if this was the end. However, it is not, said Minato. You're right. I have been working on a few things over the years. Few things that I've perfected. However, I never thought I would have to use them against you today. But I can see that you're still nowhere close to your limit. I want to know that this village is in safe hands, just in case I'm no longer here. So I want you to show me that, said Minato. 
That is why. I'm gonna help you bring it out. As Naruto stood there, Minato got to his feet. Everyone was whispering and murmuring amongst themselves. If he could keep up with Minato at this pace, he was already classified as an s right ninja. Jiraiya thought. There was no doubt about that. Minato was stronger than the Sanin. Yes. So yes, Naruto, who had killed Orochimaru despite the fact that Orochimaru was begging for death. Naruto was now a S rank missing in. There was absolutely no doubt about that. None at all. However, there was still a difference between S rank and godly level ninjas like Madara and Hoshirama. However, Naruto was not showing his fullest and Minato seemed like he was going to show his. Minato went through hand sign before Naruto felt it. It was like the man insides were being increased. The rate his organs were moving his heart beat. Naruto felt the ear pulled towards Minato. Suddenly, his eyes flashed white and he transformed. A transformation took place and Naruto was truly shocked. But guys, be end up so right here. If you want to see the next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification to get posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the Amazon links down below. Yes guys, if you want to buy all of the Soul Leveling books, I place them down there at the best price, so go ahead, check them out, and yeah, enjoy, guys. So, without further ado or wasting more time, what do you say we leap right into this brand new? What am I saying? Let's get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.